Will it be a run-of-the-mill lame duck session or time to duck and cover? And you'll want to hear the president's explanation for last week's election results. This is the Citizen Link Report. I'm Stuart Shepard, along with Tom Minery, our Senior Vice President of Government and Public Policy. Hi, Tom. Hi, Stuart. Tom, shortly after the election, the president sat down uh, with 60 Minutes and did an interview. Shortly after Election Day, he said he realized health care would be costly, politically <laughs> costly, that is, but it was, quote, probably actually a little more costly than we expected politically. Now, there was no real mention of the tangible cost of families and higher taxes and poorer service and federal funding of abortion. He didn't talk about any of that. He also said it was partly, the election results were partly the economy, partly that people did not understand, partly that the process gave people this feeling that there were insider deals going on, that there were members of Congress trying to carve things out for themselves. You may remember that special exemption that Senator Ben Nelson tried to carve out for the state of Nebraska uh, that got nixed before it was done. But he also said this. I, I couldn't get the kind of cooperation from Republicans that I had hoped for. Uh, we thought that if we shaped a bill that wasn't that different from bills that had previously been introduced by Republicans, uh, including a Republican governor in Massachusetts who's now running for president, uh, that you know, we would be able to find some common ground there. And we just couldn't. Well, Stuart, that's a remarkable statement, given the reality. It hasn't been that long ago since all of this transpired. The reason that he could not get cooperation from Republicans is that Republicans opposed the bill on principle. The bill didn't practically none of what the president said it would do. As you recounted, uh, costs won't go down, costs will go up. You will probably not be able to keep your present health care insurance policy because it may well not exist given the uh, infusion of the government into the regulatory process here that will require in the end a lot of private insurance policies to simply go away. Uh, there's a huge... Uh, air of uncertainty and nervousness about what lies ahead for this. It's, it's, it, taxes need to be collected, raised now for benefits that begin in 2014. It is that costly. It's just incredible. And, and that was incredible. part of how he said it would save money is by, by doing a little bait and switch, a little, a, little, uh, a little magic trick, if you will, on the funding, because the, the Office of Management and Budget, whatever it does, that, whatever it is that figures out the cost of this, only can start once the program really officially begins, but yet they'll be collecting taxes for years before then to try to make it look cheaper than it really is. Right, and the, the companies had to recognize the great impact on negative impact on the bottom line uh, this year for those programs, those plans that start in the future. So they already have uh, seen the blow that this will be economically to them. There is no way that this is a, a solid plan. And I, I think the president was uh, not listening well to Republican objections to it. Something I remember about the Clinton administration from long ago was his ability to blame his opponents, to accuse his opponents of doing exactly what he was doing in the speech at that moment. And, and that's somewhat what President Obama did. He, he lays the partisanship and the bickering on the Republicans. But as we recall, this passed with not a single Republican vote. Well, that's kind of partisan, if only Democrats vote for it. And there was even conversation during the course of this of passing it without taking a vote when they realized there weren't the votes there to pass. Yeah. Yeah, as you mentioned, that's that arcane practice known as deem and pass. You deem something to have been passed. And the idea that some may think there were insider deals, well, there were insider deals. The Republicans were locked out of a lot of it, including the Democrats were locked out of a lot of it. Uh, I recall that these massive additions to the bill came uh, during the middle of the night. People admitted they did not know, they did not, not have time to read it. One of the Democrat committee leaders said even if you could read it, you would need an army of lawyers to tell you what you were reading. And so this was not good. Tom, what was this election really about? You know, it was a referendum on the president's taking the country in a direction that the country did not want to go, to the uh, political left, to try to fashion a country after the European uh, big government, uh, socialist-oriented operations in which government has its hand in nearly everything. That is not the history of this country. That's not the tradition of free enterprise in this country. And uh, the people understand that. There was enough alternative 
media available to them so they could get a, a, an understanding of what was going on. There's also the uh, tremendous rise of the uh, Tea Party movement almost spontaneously, which became an effective counterbalance to what the president was trying to do. What a remarkable, remarkable season we have just come through. Now, we've got the lame duck, lame duck session coming up. It's an opportunity for all of those who are voted out of office or who are retiring to come back in and vote without any concern about a future election. Uh, two items that we're watching in particular. One is don't ask, don't tell. Where does that stand? Well, that's, the, of course, the uh, proposal that says that gays should be able to serve openly in the uh, U.S. military. It's talked about as a policy of the White House, but actually it's a federal law that says, in a sense, homosexuality is incompatible with uh, military service. That federal law has to be uh, overturned if, in fact, gays are going to be allowed to serve openly and the uh, Democrats are going to be in control of Congress only for about two more weeks during, as you say, the lame, lame duck session. And there's a great push for them to get that through since the president promised it repeatedly to the gay activists among his supporters. But because it's uh, so problematic, because there is a, a large survey of military to, to decide, to, to find out what they believe about it, that won't even be delivered until December 1st when the uh, lame duck session is about done, um, there's not really enough time. Uh, John McCain, the senator from Arizona, is being very effective in opposing this. And I don't think, I think when the dust settles, it will not pass because there's not enough time. It's too controversial. And there are other things that are more important to the country, frankly. One other issue that keeps being talked about are, are the Bush tax cuts. Uh, these are tax cuts that happened before President Obama came into office. They're set to expire starting next year. Tell us what's happening with those. Is there a chance they'll be extended? What, what would it take to do that? Well, I think there is a chance now that they will be extended simply because... Um, it is not good practice to raise taxes significantly in the time of uh, economic uh, hardship. The Republicans know this. The Democrats are coming to that uh, conclusion. The voters know it. That was a big issue in the campaign. I believe that the Bush tax cuts will be extended simply because the Democrats have seen the handwriting on the wall. And if they were to push through a huge tax increase as their last act before losing office, well, that would be a rebuke that will haunt them for years to come, I believe. It's kind of an irony because for the last two years, the Democrats have been spending more and more money, a, a trillion dollar uh, stimulus package. We've got health care that's going through, all of which have to lead to just a massive expansion of government and government spending, which obviously requires taxation. Suddenly now they're realizing that, that raising taxes is bad for the economy, that that may be what's extending the recession we're in. Well, they need that tax money to help pay for the stimulus, to help pay for the health care insurance uh, cost increase. They got to have it. And so if they do not get it, that will make the uh, Obamacare health insurance reform all that much more expensive because they won't have the benefit of that increase in tax revenue. All right. What else will you be watching during this session? Anything? I think there's a sleeper issue. It deals with something called the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. There are a lot of union pensions that are underwater. There, are, there is more pension money owed than those pension funds have. There is going to be a move to make the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, which is a kind of a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac kind of quasi-government dependent private corporation, they're, they're going to put a, try to put a lot more money into that to pay the debts owed by the pension funds from federal tax revenues. And this would be a political payoff because the pension, uh, the, the, the unions put so much money into the Democrat coffers during the campaign that the there are a lot of Democratic politicians who feel they owe this to the unions. Now, whether they will get this through with all the other stuff going on in the next two weeks, I do not know. But something needs to be done about that, 
or the uh, pension funds will not be able to uh, meet their obligations. So in, in short, they would be asking all of us who pay taxes to underwrite the pension funds for the unions because they didn't manage them well. Uh, that's absolutely uh, correct. And there's a change in uh, financial regulations that require large companies to state the unfunded obligation of their employee pensions in a way that will expose the uh, amount of money that they owe. Those regulations have not required them to require those corporations to state it this clearly. It's very complicated, but it is complicated, yeah. and yet it's very, very significant in politics, and it's very significant to the uh, federal budget. And I, I don't know how they'll accomplish it in the next two weeks, but we'll see. All right, we'll keep watching it here. Thank you, Tom, and thank you for watching. Remember, you can always write to us at mail at citizenlink.com. We also invite you to sign up to follow us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash citizenlink is where you can find us there. We encourage you to pray for our elected officials and those who were just unelected as they are meeting together for this lame duck session. Pray that they'll have wisdom and that they'll follow a wise course for our country. And remember, stand tall and be heard.